Hello everyone and welcome to the 2019 Chicago Auto Show. I am Autoguide.com Detroit Bureau Editor Craig Cole. We're going to be doing a quick walk around of the show floor here. Unfortunately though, I've got to tell you, Jody Lai, the boss lady, she's not at the show this year, so I've had to, well, enlist some extra help. I don't know if you know this gentleman. Have you seen him before? Hello, he sir. He is on the internet. He is internet famous. Internet, not just the internet. I'm, ever, I'm even on airplanes. You're on airplanes? Taking over the world. Oh my goodness. And Amazon. And Amazon? Yes. Who, I'm who in a, are I'm, you? I'm in a jungle. Who are you? I am Moto Man. And what do you do, well, Moto Man? What do I do? Well, I, my, my friends tell me that I get paid to tell jokes and, and talk about cars. Okay. Is that jokes what I do? need a little work, though. You do talk about cars a lot. Why, thanks. I'm really offended by this. You should be. Okay. <laughs> so let's but, talk about cars. Yeah, so we're here at the 2019 Chicago Auto Show. Yes, sir. Um, the largest auto show by, based on square footage and apparently and attendance. attendance, yes. In the world. This is, I gotta tell you, this is an unusual yeah. facility. Like, yeah. Can we talk about the facility yeah. just a little bit? Yeah, yeah. The McCormick Place, it is in downtown Chicago, kind of on the south side. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is so big that this show is the one that pioneered the idea of doing test drives of mm. gasoline cars inside the building. It sounds unsafe, but you can do it. Yes. With modern catalytic converters and emissions. Actually, stuff. I did it two days ago with a 1968 Ford GT500. Oh, in the concept in garage. In the concept I, garage, We did yes. not get a chance to go up there. I'm, yes. I'm jealous of you, by the way. Yeah. It sounds like it was awesome. It was. Shameless plug, it's on my channel. What What is the channel? Is it, uh, it's, Moto Man TV, well, on YouTube, it's, obviously, Moto Man TV, uh, Amazon, Apple, as well as Google, Moto Man TV, all one word. Is that a coincidence? It's all the same. It's all the same. How did you do I, that? Every, well, started, every name is already taken. I started before every, every name was taken. Let's put it that way. Yeah. All right. So we got a lot to cover here. Um, so we're going to hit the Mazda booth first. Very special reveal. My they favorite did. here. Oh yeah. Yeah. Beautiful car. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to go to Volkswagen for a sporty new sedan. We're going to hit some heavy trucks and a lot more on the way. So come on, Mazda is right over. Your back and shoulders. we're celebrating a bit of an anniversary. It's a very important. A huge anniversary yeah. that started here. It, yes, because we have these, this pair of beautiful orange cars. They are the 30th anniversary oh, editions of the Mazda MX-5 uh, Miata, which, to your point, debuted here in 1989. So this is interesting. There's a fun fact that most people aren't aware of, that the Miata, you would think it would have debuted at Los Angeles International Auto Something Show. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. Because after all, it is a convertible. But it turns out this show is where the Miata debuted, and I believe the NSX debuted really? as well. Really? So yeah. that's because in recent years the Chicago show is usually trucks. Pretty slow to not often a lot of groundbreaking reveals. But historically, to your point, a lot of very significant products have yeah. been unveiled here. And as we were talking about the building, that happened in the building across the street from here. Okay. So there was an old building. This is a new building that came out. I want to say 15, 20 years ago. Okay. Now, back to these cars here, the, the most important thing you're going to notice is the color. It's exclusive to the 30th anniversary. It's called Racing Orange. You are not going to miss You're not going to miss that color. This. I actually have a fun fact about the Go color. Go ahead. So it turns out that color is based in yellow. Really? Yeah, because if you look over here, the white car, the blue car, and the red car, okay. uh, they had three different colors on display back in 1989. Okay. One of them was a yellow. Okay. And so they decided to bring a yellow back, but much like Volvo with Swedish racing green, which uh -huh. is not green, it's blue, <laughs> they decided to make their yellow orange. Okay. Another fun fact. And it's a, it's a there looker, is, too. There is a white, this is an NA Miata, this is the first Miata. Mm -hmm. Uh, the fun fact is there's a gentleman, he's actually right over there, mm -hmm. he is uh, the director of design for Mazda North America, okay. he's one of two, and uh, he was working at Chrysler when this car came out. Okay. He was so enthralled with this car, he took his own money that he earned from Chrysler and bought a white Miata. 1990 Miata. I don't think Lee Iacocca would have been happy. No, he wasn't. But he, it, that's his personal car. Oh, really? The one right that there. That is in beautiful shape. That is Ken Soward's personal car. Wow. Yes. And you can really see the progression of the design of this car, the Miata, over the years. We've got yeah, one so of we each generation. Yeah, so we have an NA, we have an NB, we have an NC, and obviously the NDs over here. I, actually, I'm going to ask you a question here. Go for it. And let's open this question up to the audience. What between in the ND do you prefer, the soft top or the RF? Hard, uh, the soft top, hands down. Soft top, it's really? It's lighter, it's simpler, Hello. it's more appropriate yeah. for a roadster type of car. I don't get the... The hard top, personally. You don't get, look at the beauty of the hard top. It's a much n more natural line. Yeah, but there's something about the classic British sports car, European sports car, that you need a rag top, I think. See, I'm more of the E-type yeah. coupe. 
That's okay. what I, that's what I see like that, here. That, dr that drama. Even though I like an open top car, a lot yeah. of the cars I've personally owned have been convertibles. Yeah. But this is the best of both worlds, and I would argue the fastback line mm -hmm. fixes the design of this car. Okay, I can see that. So what are the differences? Let's, well, let's talk specs. Yeah, you get a two-liter naturally aspirated engine, which is. 181 yeah. horsepower, nothing Lord. new there. Have you but driven the extra 26 horsepower? I have horsepower? not. So, I mean, I found the car to have enough power without the boost. It's good. But it's probably welcome change, It's not a huge change, difference. Right? It's just it's a little bit more supple. Yeah. You get forged 17-inch raised wheels. Only right away. Yeah. Very important. Mm -hmm. Retuned suspension. Orange brake calipers. Very interesting story there. The fronts are Brembo's. The rears are manufactured yeah. by Nissan. And That's, you know why? Why is that? Because Brembo apparently does not make a brake caliper where you can have a handbrake, a mechanical, a cable action. Are you action. serious? So they went to Nissan, which I guess does a lot of motorcycle that stuff. That is so funny, I didn't know that. So that's why the calipers are from two different suppliers. Wow. To think but I learned something from a guy who drives a 36 Ford. It's amazing, I know. So they're only gonna make 3,000 of these, uh, only 500 are coming to the US. I have a so, fun fact for you. Go ahead. They're already sold out. I would not be surprised. Yeah. The order books opened yesterday. Yeah, and they sold out inside of like two hours. <laughs> I'm not no exaggeration. surprised. Yeah. Base price was about $36,000, including delivery. Think about that. 36 grand for a Miata. That's a lot. That's a lot of money. Well, it's special, and you get special badges. Yeah, but and you get Recaro seats. Yeah, very yeah. true. With yeah. some nice piping that matches the paint. Yeah, but speaking we've got, of British. We've got another performance car we should talk about. So we're going to go to Deutschland. Yes, we're okay. going to the Volkswagen display. Volkswagen. And... Bis später. Bis später. So yes, uh, Volkswagen is right over here. They're, they're kitty corner to the Mazda booth. And Are we still excited about the CX-9? It's a gorgeous crossover. Okay. What's, what's not to be excited about? Okay, I'm just asking. Turbo torque? I mean, I yeah, know you're quite a car snob it falls. No, the turbo torque. I, I, you know I love me some Dave Coleman, but the torque falls off at about 2,800 RPM. Because it's, it's tuned. tuned. Yeah, it's tuned for a very specific purpose. I actually am not a fan of that. Okay, well, yeah. that's I'm fair. a fan of the car, but I'm not a fan of the tuning. Because it's gorgeous inside and oh, out. Oh, it's stunning on the inside. It's nicer than a Q7. Yeah. So let's talk performance. Yes, we have the 2019 Volkswagen GLI. Which is GLI. not that. This is the Passat. Refreshed Passat we saw in Detroit. This is the one we like here. Yeah. Very beautiful car. Um, so obviously a lot of little styling tweaks, some red accents. You yeah. get a mesh grill up front done in black with a little red line. I like a, the red line. It's a tip of the hat to yeah. the GTI. Right? I agree. Yeah. So now what are some of the specs? Well, you get a two liter turbo four, big shocker there, right? EA triple eight. Of course, Entwicklung Aggregate. <laughs> Development powertrain, I believe. Genau. Genau. So anyway, 228 horses, 258 torques. And now, are we actually about to throw another question to the audience Go today? Ahead. Absolutely. Are you guys surprised that they went straight to the 228 horsepower on this? Or were you expecting them to kind of dumb it down mm -hmm. below the GTI, make it the 210? Because you know how there's the sport pack. There's so many. Yeah, with this engine, they've got so many derivations of the EA AAA. Are you surprised that they did this? Yeah. 228 well, versus 210. They should have put the Golf R engine in, Frank. Well, and all-wheel drive, but that's, yeah, you that's know. That's another story. That's a different yeah. kettle of fish. But here you go. Six-speed manual standard. Thank you. If you can't figure Vian out three Dom. pedals, there's also a seven-speed DSG. But um, it does get Golf R brakes, if not the powertrain. Did you now, know that? Did you know? I actually do not know the answer to this. Okay. GTI, does that have Golf R brakes? That's a good question. So it's like 13.7 in the front? Uh, about 13.4. 13.4. Okay. Yeah. 13.7 is the Super. Yeah. Now this car goes on sale in the spring. Pricing has not been announced just yet, nor has apparently the drive program. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Which you were asking about earlier. <laughs> yeah. Uh, very important. Yes. No torsion beam in the back. No, that's correct. Independent rear suspension. Proper Which sporting. I was surprised. Did you drive this car yet? Because I know I asked you if you drove a Leaf. and you didn't. What? There's a lot of cars you have not driven. I, I try to do products we haven't done yet. Yeah, so. why, why do they give you AMGs? You can't handle a car with <laughs> a ton of horsepower. But I, I will tell you, I was went into the drive. They did they did a drive what last fall, mm -hmm. and I went to the drive not expecting to like this car. Yeah. Because what they've done is they've they've tried to make it cheaper. You're to talking make, about the standard fare Jetta. Yeah. Yeah. And what they did, like for example, you look here, Ben. Why don't you show them here? The parcel shelf usually has mouse fur on it oh. on any car, and the reason mm. why it has mouse fur is to cut down on the glare. Okay. Here they've saved let's let's call it ten dollars in real production costs. But when you're looking out the rear window, there is glare now. Oh, I think dear. this is unsafe. The other area they saved money on was a torsion beam. Mm -hmm. So they put a torsion beam on to make it cheaper in production. But believe it or not, that actually works. Yeah, well Mazda's using well. a torsion beam in the new three. Yes, yeah, so I'm excited for, to for, drive that. Because there are numerous benefits, packaging, lighter weight, more mechanical packaging and money. simplicity. 
Yeah, he's nicer about it than me. It's just being a cheapskate. Well, yes, but it, for like 95% of people, it's going to be fine. I would agree. Yeah. But he's so, a cheapskate. Well, you, well it's from the legendary cheapskate. Yeah. Um, I'm actually cheaper than him. Yes, you are. <laughs> this car goes on sale in the spring. Sits about six tenths of an inch lower with yes, the new it chassis. Does. It so, does. Yeah. Very nice. I'm do looking like forward the, to driving uh, this. Do we like the 35th anniversary color? That's gorgeous. This is only available for gray. this year. That's beautiful. Battleship gray. Kind of would... comes from the Audi palette. Are you sure it's not from the, the Bismarck or Terpitz <laughs> palette? <laughs> <laughs> the interior on this car, too. I, ben, I think you already showed the, the some viewers. Some accents, yeah. But it's just some red accents, but I like the cleanliness of the design. It's, it's I, yeah, simple and this and was on clean. the basic car as yeah. well. I, I was pleasantly surprised by this car. Mm -hmm. Really pleasantly surprised. I did not expect it. And you are a, an aficionado of, of snobbery and high-end automobiles. So. But I also, I am a common man. You know, I am evoked. Mm -hmm. And I really do like GTIs. As much as I love GT3s, the GTI is probably the best value out there, yeah. new car, for 24 grand. Yeah. You have a car with 230 horsepower, it's light, mm -hmm. it's fun to drive, I can put Kumo in the back, <laughs> and I can get the ridiculous plaid seats. Who is Kumo, for those of oh, our audience For those who don't know, who okay, is. so uh, I have a co-host on my show. Okay. My co-host stands about this tall, mm -hmm. he's 65 pounds, he's very white and very fluffy. Mm -hmm. He's also very fickle. Mm -hmm. His favorite cars are Aston Martins, and he doesn't like riding in SUVs. Really? Yeah. Does he get car sick? No, he doesn't. He actually, I'm not making this up. You guys can see this on camera. I put him in Porsches, mm -hmm. and I recently had him in a GT3 with the $10,000 seats. He leans into the turns as we drive around the, uh, the cab. He's an Alaskan Malamute? No, he is a, he's, a, he's a purebred husky. Husky. 65-pound husky. Giant puffball of white. Yes, and but apparently my, uh, let's keep my moving viewers and talking here. like him better than me. Well, he's not so cheap. <laughs> <laughs> but we're moving next door to the Subaru booth. Okay, this is where you're going to have to take control here. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so brand new 2020 Legacy debuted in Chicago, which of course um, is an important product for Subaru. People will say the sedan segment now, is dying. I, I want to ask I you a serious agree. question. Go ahead. Is it really an important product or is the Outback and the wagons that they make uh, the, just the bread, bread and butter? I think it's an important product because folks that say this, the sky is falling, yeah. the sedan segment is dying, they're still selling millions of them per year. I agree. And there's still a lot of money to be made. I so, also believe that, that be, having a sedan is an insurance policy because the market will, trends change. Oh yeah, and you, very quickly too. And you don't want to be there without that product nope. when the trend changes back. Precisely. So, this is the seventh generation Legacy. It's built on a brand new platform, the Subaru Global Platform, a very oh, so inventive they're doing, name. They're doing an M MQB kind of Basically, thing? Basically, yeah. Because I think it, they share it with like the other crossovers they so built. So the Outback rides on the same platform? I believe so. It's 70% stiffer than the okay. outgoing version. Are they using high strength steel or aluminum to do that? It's high strength steel and okay. more like 800 million meter, okay. meters of adhesive, <laughs> structural adhesive. Which sounds really cheap. It's not. No. But it's not a glue stick. They're not no, going in there with Elmer's. No, it was by Lotus. Yeah. So F1 company. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we've got two engines, one transmission, unfortunately. And I think you know Please what I'm going to say. Please don't tell me what it is. It's a CVT. We, oh. I know you just threw up in I, your mouth a little bit. I'm already not a Subaru guy, but that really pushes me off. We got My two. My sister-in-law has has a Outback. Okay. And people love Subarus for uh, they have the all-wheel drive, the 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 people lifestyle. People in Oregon, Canada, uh, Colorado, Boulder, Colorado, yeah, and Vermont. <laughs> but they have sort of a cult following. Not anymore. No, you think I, they've I, gone too mainstream? No, they haven't gone too mainstream. And you know what? I, okay, I, I'm going to full disclosure. I am not a Subaru fan at all. But the thing I like about Subaru is they manage their growth. They don't chase market share. They realize that. We were growing. There were the, mm -hmm. there was only two car companies that sold more cars in 2009 and 2008. Yeah. One was Subaru, the other one was Morgan. Everybody else had a 50% haircut. And I would argue Subaru was in that position because they managed their growth responsibly. For stability, yes. Yeah, and no structural wood. Right? <laughs> like Morgan. Oh, come on, that's good for you. I would you. love structural because it gets that creak, it gives a smoother ride come on. when the body. Do plays. you want this or do you want a Morgan three wheeler? Mm, a Morgan would be cool. Yes. Um, what else? Base engine is a 2.5 liter four banger, horizontally opposed. Yes. It's supposedly 90% new, so it should be smoother and more. And economical. all wheel drive is fitted as standard. I'm oh, assuming. Of course. It's okay. A Subaru, okay. Right? Okay. Yeah. You get 182 horsepower, 176 pound feet of torque with that base engine, but well, zero to 68.4 seconds. Totally well, acceptable for the segment. <clears throat> Once, I mean, it's a, it's a flat four. They don't yeah. really make a lot of torque unless it's a Porsche. Yeah. Uh, fuel economy, I'm surprised they released estimates already. 27 city, 35 highway with the base engine. 
And what, okay, and what is it, what is it with the higher engine? So the higher engine is a 2.4 liter turbo, which they've got on display right okay. here, Ben. Why don't we Let's swing take a around. look at this. That gets you 260 horses, 277 torques, and zero to 60 in as little as 6.1 seconds. Do we know seconds. where the 277 comes in? I does did not in, like, see the RPM thousand? number. I would assume this pretty is, low, it's turbocharged. So wait, well, this is we have to talk about here, because not everything is a flathead V8. <laughs> uh, inherently, flat sixes, flat fours make torque very high. That because of the inherent design of the engine. Mm -hmm. However, Porsche has been able to figure out through a combination of turbocharging and adjusting Isn't the like waste the manifold state, too. Uh, it's, it's a bunch of things. Yeah. Basically, how air is delivered and how is air is removed from a boxer. Mm -hmm. That's the challenge. Uh, and they've been able to get torque coming in at as low as 1,900 RPM wow. on the Boxer, on the 718s. Yeah. So it's surprising. That's the four-cylinder they've got. That's the four-cylinder, yeah. yeah. So it's surprising to see that they're getting 277 out of their four-cylinder. Yeah. I'd like to see where it comes in. I mean, because one of the advantages of a Boxer is you have less rotational mass because you don't need counterweights on your Absolutely. crankshaft. So that's probably part of the reason they don't yeah. develop as much low-end torque, yeah. I would assume. But um, 0 to 60, 6.1 seconds with this engine, and they're projecting 24 miles per gallon city and 32 highway. With a turbo of 260 yeah, horsepower, that's, that's pretty not bad. And 6.1 seconds. Do we know how much this weighs? It was, I don't believe it was in the materials. Okay. But I'm sure it's, you know, 3,000 to 4,000 pound range. Probably. I think, I'm guessing 3,500. Yeah. But uh, I think we should throw another question to the yeah. audience. Please do. What, what do we think of this design? Do we like it? Do we not like it? What do we like better? What do we like less? Like in this segment, there is the Optima, there is the Sonata, mm -hmm. there is the Camry. The dead Fusion. We're not talking about dead cars. No Fusion. You can't vote Fusion. You can't <laughs> vote Malibu. You can't vote Impala. Uh -huh. Uh, you can vote XT or CT6, although it's way more expensive. It's but in the sedan segment, A, do you like this or not? And B, what would you choose over it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's quite handsome. But let's move on to the Nissan okay. booth. Nissan. On our way, I'm going to say big technology inside the new Legacy. They've got sort of a Ram truck-esque 11.6-inch screen. Oh, so, so you it's can like have the Tesla where yes, it's like an iPad. Display. Oh, yes. that's pretty cool. So Does I, it do uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto? It should have Apple CarPlay, yeah. Android Auto as well? I believe so. Okay. And they also have standard EyeSight, which is their suite of advanced driver well, aids. Oh, like the, you know, the, the cameras, Emergency yeah, braking, yeah. all that jazz. Yep. Okay. And the car goes on sale in the fall. What are we so. thinking nowadays? Is that just something that people expect in cars nowadays? I don't know that consumers are necessarily even aware of it yet. They don't think it's become part of the collective mind. I think mind, you and I you know? are a bit spoiled, because every car that they send us has all this crap oh, in yeah. it. Like, yeah. To the point where I turn it off. Oh, as we're walking to the other hall, can we just point this out? This is a, oh, this is a, um, a, a Pathfinder, Yes. but it's a Rock Creek Pathfinder. So this is, we just came out of Subaru. Subaru kind of invented the whole concept of like the body cladding where mm -hmm. they're out back and they raise the height of the vehicle. Yep. This doesn't go quite as far as raising the height of the vehicle because it already is sort of a crossover. Mm -hmm. Uh, but they've added the body cladding, changed some of the details around. It's mostly around. visual It's stuff. mostly visual, because it was already a crossover. Um, the package itself, what is it? A fa I think it's $1,000 for the package here. Like $9.95. Yeah. yeah. So it's, the concept is, do you want a more rugged looking crossover as opposed to, do you want one with a cleaner look? Like mm -hmm. I personally, in the Volvo world, they do this. I would always choose the V90 over the cross country of course, V90. Yeah. Uh, I a actually am wagon. a fan of the Pathfinder. Yeah. It's not Other a than vehicle. its terrible transmission, I am a big fan of the Pathfinder. I think it has a strong V6. I love the size of it. It drives pretty well with the exception of that atrocious transmission. 284 horse and direct injection. Yeah. 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 So this yeah. is one of the vehicles Nissan sort of unveiled here. They've also got an updated Rogue Sport. Let's do we want to look at that? Do, do a very quick okay. flyby on that. Okay. And this is one of the special uh, paint colors you can get on the Rock. That is a good Creek, looking color. Which I'm not really a fan yeah. of green, but that's beautiful. But you're an old school kind of guy. Yeah. You should appreciate an old green. Well, I'm also partially colorblind. So. <laughs> oh, that's a bit of a problem. You'd have a problem flying planes. Yes. This is the new 2020, I'm making air quotes, new 2020 this is a Rogue Sport. Yes. Mm -hmm. So is that, it's something called in Canada? Yeah, it's, it's brand new. It is the up north. Yeah. 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 Okay. So to Jody, that's a Kashka. Exactly, okay. and everyone else in the yeah. Auto Guide home. To Column as well. Yes. Okay. Yes. But um, what have we got here? So very mildly updated. New hood, new grill, new bumper. Oh, updated so the corporate lights. grill is different. Yeah. The V-Motion grill. Yeah, so they've extended it down into the bumper. Yeah. I got to tell you, I, I so I, full disclosure, I am a fan of Alfonso Albaiza. Oh, yeah. He is the now new head of design for Nissan. 
Uh, I'm one of the few people that liked a car that he penned, which was the Juke. Yeah. That was his sketch. Oh, you like the Juke. And I actually like the Juke. You're one of those six people. I'm one of those six people, exactly. <laughs> I like the design of this. You actually have that in common with Jody. She was a Juke fan. She was. Yeah. Oh, see, Jody. Well, I'm ostensibly I still I is. knew I liked Jody for a reason. <laughs> but this, I actually like the design of this. That's not I bad like at this all. better. And that, the Rogue is their top sell. They sell, what, mm -hmm. 250000 yeah, a year? Yeah, it's their new. It's their, new, it's their new Altima. Yeah, exactly. But this is a good looking car. It is. I, and they I, share a lot in common. It's basically just a short one. It's road, a short right? one, yeah. With a two liter four this cylinder thing, with less power. This is one of the few cars, Japanese cars in Europe, that sell a significant volume. I mean, Europe they is such a saturated market. They with that they have. Now. And the thing with that, they manufacture it on the ground in the UK for the whole of Europe. For now, at least. <laughs> yeah. There's Brexit. Unless they're oh, going to have a Brentry. I don't know Brentry. if you saw the. Okay, now I'm getting oh. into a little geopolitics here. But the British government went to Nissan yeah. to make sure that that oh, yeah. plant stays there. Okay. The, the British well, they got to protect it. Is yeah. actually going to put some money into Nissan for it. Okay. So Where let's head over to Chevrolet next. Oh, Chevrolet. We Chevrolet. got your favorite. I know you love trucks. So we're going to talk about Silverado HD next, which oh, we're talking is HD. very important news. GTR. We can't talk about GTRs? I'd if you want to do GTRs. a flyby, what no. do you want to say about it? It's a GTR. It's cooler than a pickup truck. Uh, can it tow 35,500 pounds? Why would you want to tow 35,000 pounds? Maybe you do oh, wait, real work really for a living. It? Can really 35,000 pounds? 35.5. I thought HDs did 18 or something like that. No, no, it's more that's nearly See, I'm double way, that. See, I'm way off on this stuff. See, Ram, we're going to get to the Ram HD, which was unveiled at Detroit. Did I tell you about my, my new vision? No. So you know this, that I bought an airplane. Yes. And, and part of the pilot's license. And I, yeah. So the, the, the plan now is to have a lake house. Okay. Okay. But once I get the lake house, which will happen in the future, I'm thinking one of those Jeep pickup trucks. Okay. I never wanted the oh, pickup truck. Oh, the Gladiator, truck. yeah. Yeah, terrible name. I'm taking the badging off and putting Scrambler back on. <laughs> yeah. But my plan now is I never wanted the pickup truck. I think I want a Jeep pickup truck. Okay. Yeah. That'd be cool. I mean, if you can deal with having iron logs supporting the front and rear ends of the vehicle. That's fine. I... I'm a Lotus guy. <laughs> I'm totally open to unrefined. But wow. here we are, HD, that is a lot of truck That's and a lot a of lot. grill. That's a lot of grill. Guys, what do you all think of the design of these new trucks? I, I, I think I already know the answer Should to that. Should we not say anything? I'm just going to say this. I saw the comments on our first look video, yeah. and they were not kind. Yeah. What is the old <laughs> saying? If uh, your mother told you, if you don't say anything nice, don't say anything at all? Precisely. Yeah, so let's not say anything. <laughs> yeah. About the design. but. A lot of changes here. The bodies are up to 5.2 inches longer than before. Yeah. Much more capability, up to, again, 35,500 pounds of towing when properly equipped. They've got, Chevy has had the bumper steps for a number of years on the, whoops, rear Speaking of the vehicle. Of bumper steps. Now they've added one on the side. They're calling it the, uh, the bed step. So very easy to hop up and get into the bed because the, look at how, I mean, you can see just like that. Supports up to 500 pounds. Very easy to get access to. Oh, the and bed. look at this! It's like a fancy SUV where yeah. you hit the button and it automatically closes the tailgate. Step. Is this not now the new frontier? Like, how funky can you make your tailgate? Because I That's... saw something where Ram has a barn door now. Yes. And then is... uh, who does the one with the like the half thing that folds? It's the GMC. GMC. Okay. So like tailgates have been the same for a hundred years, and now in the same model year, we're getting two <laughs> groundbreaking tailgate <laughs> designs. It's yeah. crazy. Um, what else have we got to talk about? Oh, there are 22 cab, bed, and engine configurations with these trucks, so there's really something for anyone. And George, you open the door, you're going to be disappointed. Uh, do you have any sunglasses? Same... Wow, I that's don't. a lot of shiny. That's a lot of shiny that's plastic. That's a lot same of shiny. Same interior as the, the 1500, basically. That's a lot of shiny. And everyone has criticized them for these interiors. They're just, especially next to the new Ram. I don't know if you've sat in I've one of those. I've seen the George. Ram, yeah. Stunning. The, the They've Ram done is very stunning nice, work. Yeah. Again, biased, Ralph Shield, personal friend, yeah. great guy, does good work. They really put a lot of work into that. But just a little disappointing yeah. in the bed, or the interior. Rather. You know, I know this sounds like marketing mumbo jumbo, and you can yell at me all you want about <laughs> this, but uh, when designers set out to, to create a product like this, yeah. they do some benchmarking, they of go course. out and they look at everybody else. In this segment, the one to beat is Ford. And I would argue, and I'm not a, you know I'm not a Ford guy, I would choose the Ford all day long in a second, all day long, mm -hmm. especially based on that interior. Yeah. However, Ram did something interesting in that the designers went out and benchmarked BMWs and Audis for the Ram the pickup truck. The aspirational brands they want to follow. Exactly. Yeah. And look, it's 
selling. Everybody Everybody's loves their buying trucks. it. Yeah. Their sales volumes are crazy. Up. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. A couple new powertrains. Well, one new powertrain, really. 6.6 .6 liter gasoline V8. Wow. That's a lot of displacement. What, nine MPG? Yeah, probably single <laughs> digits. But 401 horse, 464 torque. Oh, that's nice. And it will be matched to a six speed automatic transmission. The, the diesel they offer, the, the 6.6 Duramax. Yeah. GM doesn't seem keen to be playing in the, uh, the mine's bigger than yours game that okay. Ram and Ford are engaged in right now. Because remember, the Ram has, you can get up to a thousand pound feet of torque now. A thousand? A thousand. Four digits. That's more than two Mercedes AMGs put together. Yeah, it's That's a lot of torque. Amazing. And they were going to be the reigning towing champion with like 35,100. I, I know that. Well, with the interior, you're going to yeah. want one. Um, but these are, GM is rather standing pat on output, uh, just it? 910 torque. Well, let me ask you an odd question. You remember sure. how, um, what was it, Acura with that terrible RL? They kept on saying you should buy a, this with the V6 because you don't need the eight cylinder. Mm -hmm. And to some extent, I kind of agree with that. Mm -hmm. Do you need a thousand pounds of torque? You need a commercial driver's license to tow as much as these trucks can. But do you, I'm, but do you need it? Is no. it on, actually, you know what? Let's throw it out to the audience because I, I do not have a commercial driver's mm -hmm. license and I have been full disclosure, I don't know commercial trucks. Yeah. Does one need a thousand torque? It's, as in, like, it, it, it gets the job done, or are these guys standing pat because that's all you need? That's I the question. I think they're standing the pat because that's really all you need. Are you going to notice a difference between nine, ten, and a thousand? What is the towing capacity between the, the three? Uh, the Ford, I don't remember, but properly equipped, the Ram will do thirty-five thousand one hundred. Mm -hmm. This will do thirty-five thousand five hundred, and we're waiting on the Ford because they sort of jumped in to unveil their new trucks. But we don't have all the deep because they I think they wanted to stay in the news cycle when everybody else is doing this stuff. So oh, actually, we don't I, know I what know the new this. 2020 is. Now have. you just a ball dropped yeah. on them. Anyway, we... questions below. And just like that, through the magic of editing, we are transported to the South Hall, specifically the Ford booth, where we're gonna talk about this gigantic pickup truck. Continuing the, the theme of trucks. Yes, sir. We love trucks here in America. And Man, this one's this gonna is be a truck. That is this a truck. This is a cowboy Cadillac, even though it's a Ford. It's a 2020 Super Duty, not completely redesigned, but heavily refreshed for the latest model. What did year. they refresh? Uh, they've done some tweaks inside, but more importantly, mechanical changes. So there's been a base 6.2 liter single overhead cam V8, gasoline, that's the base engine, but they've developed a brand new, what they're calling big block. It's a pushrod V8, iron block, built for this long haul serviceability. you, Mr. Flathead oh, V8, very excited. It gets me very angry because the valves should not be in the heads, but that's another story. <laughs> but 7.3 liter big block gasoline V8, uh, they have not released you know, the horsepower or mm -hmm. torque figures at this time because again, these trucks are going to be going on sale later in the year. So yes. they're not going to tip their hands just yet. Same story with capability. We don't know what these things are going to tow or haul just yet. It's going to be a lot. In this segment, again, you yeah. are the expert at this, I am not. What is the, is the breakdown between gas and diesel and sales when you get into these heavy duties? I think that a lot of them, I don't know a specific, but there are a lot that are sold with diesels. So I would people think that use them. Diesel. I don't know if it would be that high, but it could be. Because people that need a heavy duty truck, they're typically the ones that are really working, yeah. towing, hauling all day long. I will say what I do know about these things, I've got a number of friends in yeah. the film world okay. that use these for work. Okay. And if you try to buy a heavy-duty diesel used, mm -hmm. the resale is crazy high. Yeah. Like one of these with a no exaggeration, 200,000 miles on mm -hmm. it is still 50% of the new value. Well, you think about it, the upcharge is almost 10 grand for if you get one of the big three with a diesel. But if you big do the trucks. gas, it's orders of magnitude cheaper. Yeah, yeah. Crazy and less capability, of course. Much less capability. But cheaper fuel. Yeah. And arguably less service requirements because of the there's no complex emissions yes. control system. It's much like the boat world. Yes. Diesels have a much higher resale. Yeah. So anyway, the updated 6.7 Power Stroke diesel will also receive a number of changes, a new turbocharger, revised block, mm. and cylinder heads. Mm. Again, output figures have not been shared, but I would bet my life it's going to have more than 1,000. It's going to have 1,012, let's say. Because Ford's not going to let Ram have the torque. No, and I would argue Ford is, is and I, you know I am not a Ford guy. Mm -hmm. I am a GM guy, even though I don't like to design the other one. This. If I'm buying a pickup, this is it. Yeah, yeah. definitely. So we're going to head over to Ram now. George, I know you had to go. We do. Moto Man, are you good on time? I'm good. Or if do I can you need give a you more? three minutes let's, more. Let's let's want to go to Ram, or do we want to show them something cooler? What do you want? To, what do you have in mind? Do you want to show them? Uh, uh, well, we got a, a Toyota Rav4 or TRD is probably you, cooler. 
Maybe it's over there. It. Actually, we should just leave him with a question. Okay. Does TRD Pro work on a RAV4? Would someone buy that? I wouldn't. Really? I wouldn't, unfortunately. Okay. But, well, is, it, but uh, is it TRD Pro, because they're calling it TRD Off-Road. Is that like another little Either way, sub? I think it's sacrilegious. <laughs> So what do you guys think? Is it sacrilegious to put TRD on a RAV4? With mm -hmm. that, I do want to see the RAM, and then I'm going to skedaddle. All right, let's yeah. run over to RAM. Yeah. I know you've got a lot of planning to do, because you're going to be doing a live broadcast here And I have shortly. a guest on that show. Who could that be? I wonder who that guest is. Yes. Hmm. I don't know. It's but me. you can see it today. Well, actually, by the time you see this, it'll be yesterday. But can they find it on YouTube? They and can what find channel it on, would it be they on? They can find it on YouTube at Motoman TV, all one word. Mm -hmm. M-O-T-O-M-A-N TV, all one word. They can find it on YouTube. They can find it on YouTube Red. They can find it on my app. I am in the Apple iTunes store. There's an app for that? There's an app. And Google Android store. The Google, Google Play, well, they call it the Play Store. The Google store. And uh, Amazon, too. They can find it in many Excuse places. Us. Oh, this is cool. All right, this is the multi-pro tailgate. Now, this is not on the HD trucks that we were. I need a hat like, like him. But this, this guy likes this ram. I like check this hat. Out. Oh, thanks, is that a Stetson? She let me borrow it. Yeah? yeah, she's nice to you. Yeah, she's cool. Yeah. Oh, and a rodeo series and everything. <laughs> this is when you buy a pickup, you should throw in a free Stetson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, a Stetson, <laughs> yeah, no, a right. Stetson, not right. just a hat. Right. Yeah. Oh, this is the barn door. This is the new tailgate. This is their multi function tailgate. You can see it's split as a barn door, 60-40. How do we open it? it well, here, they drop, you do the top handle here, bend, come in the middle. This is so cool. Top handle, it drops like a normal tailgate, supports a okay. ton, full 2,000 pounds. You fold it up, the handle down here lets you open it, kind of like the Honda Ridgeline. That's pretty now cool. Now you've got a nice step. There's also a deployable step here, so you can Hop up into your I gotta tell you, this is cooler than that powered thing we saw on the GMC. Yeah, because this is like the next level. Right? This is this is. Didn't they do this in the '70s with like Buick station wagons? Maybe they did something, something like, like and the this. glass went up into the top yeah. of the car. And I was talking to the engineer. If these aren't actually closed all the way, the tailgate will not work because there are sensors and electronics inside of it. It won't let you drop it. Oh, you really? have to That's have pretty it. Pretty cool. Because it would you, this, it would be damaged. This is ingenuity. Yes, like, it is. I would use this. Yeah. And think if you've got is something up in the bed, how in do you the, get in the it? truck? Do you have to pay for this? I think it's depending on the uh, the trim level. It's something like a thousand dollar option. This is a grant to do this. Yeah, well, think wow. of all the stampings and switches and circuits and stuff. You know I'm a cheapskate. I know you would you never know, get. This. I still go to truck. Costco on Saturdays for the free samples. Well, you can see. That's very the executive easy. lunch here at Auto Guide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's, that's what column allows us to eat. Yes, yeah, right. <laughs> the free handouts. <laughs> So, this is very cool. Yeah. I am not a pickup truck guy, but I gotta say, I am kind of blown away by it. It's this. a different take on the, on the on the same basic idea because you've got the GMC Sierra with their multi-function, the multi-pro tailgate, whatever they call it, where it's a tailgate within a tailgate. Yeah. That one does a bit more, but the idea is similar. You'll have to show that to the audience yeah. once I leave. Yeah. And you're gonna have I, to I get going now. Anyway. I think this is the one I like the best. So yeah. on that note, thank you for having me. Yes. Thank you, you for helping. You can see us together today. Well, this is yesterday for you. Uh, at Motoman TV, all one word, Motoman TV, all one word, Facebook, mm -hmm. Twitter, Instagram, Amazon, Apple, Google, and my producer is calling me right now because my butt like is shaking. You're like a pandemic. You're everywhere. I gotta go. Motoman, thank you. I'll see you thank shortly. Thank you for having me. I really enjoyed yep. this. We will continue our I'm walk I'm gonna check the comments. Here. I'm gonna weigh in on the comments on some of those ad questions we asked. Will do. Ask, we'll see you around. Ask. Bye. All right, let's check out those heavy duty trucks now because Ram unveiled those last month in Chicago and we've, all, or in Detroit, and we've already showed you the Ford and the Chevrolet. So let's go this way now. Just a very quick recap. Let's track down a heavy duty here. So right in this box here, yeah, that's the, the new Cummins, the updated 6.7 Cummins turbo diesel that you can get in the new Ram heavy duties. Up to 1,000 pound feet of torque from this thing, compacted graphite iron block. The engine is lighter as well. And when you get that 1,000 pound feet, offered in two strengths. There's a slightly less powerful version you can get, but when you go with 1,000 pound-feet, you get an Eisen six-speed transmission that allows you to tow up to 35,100 pounds, just a little bit less than the new Chevrolet. Um, obviously, very competitive market, and automakers are always trying to one-up each other, and Chevy had a little advantage in waiting, I think, because they knew what Ram was going to do, and then they can add just a couple hundred pounds more to their towing figure. But let's keep walking here. This should be one of the heavy duties. Yes, this is a 2500. This is a high-end Laramie model with that Cummins diesel under the hood. 
should be a very popular option for a lot of folks that really work their trucks hard. A um, few details about this thing. Brand new high strength steel frame, 98.5% high strength steel, which helped them, in addition to some engine changes, take up to 143 pounds out of volume trim levels of the Ram Heavy Duty. Uh, upping refinement. Uh, there are tuned mass dampers that they've mounted to the frame that help cancel out vibration from that big oil burning engine up front. And now that we're inside, you can really see just how beautiful the interior is. These are like, I mean, these are luxury car interiors in a heavy duty work truck. Ram is really leading the segment in cabin quality. Just beautiful leather, stitching, nice trim, just thoughtful touches, attention to detail. Really nice job. Now, if you don't want that Cummins diesel, there's also a base. Hemi V8, 6.4 liters. It gives you 410 horsepower and 429 pound-feet of torque. So that will save you thousands and thousands of dollars when you go to buy this truck new because, as always, when you want the big diesel, they cost a lot of money. So you got to pay to play in the heavy-duty truck segment. But that's a very quick look at the new Ram Heavy Duties, which again debuted in Detroit, but totally worth showing off here in Chicago. Wrapping things up, let's swing by the Toyota booth. Uh, they had a number of reveals at the show this year. Some, now some new-ish items. And I say ish because with Toyota, it's very rarely ever new. They've got an updated Tacoma, for instance. And it's just some, it's a grill and some tail lights. They've added a 10-way power driver's seat. It's crazy they haven't had that before, but it's in there for the new model year. Let's see if we've got one on display somewhere at the booth. You've got to have one, two, or more. Because the thing is, I think with the Tacoma, it doesn't need to be. I mean, it's probably not the best in-segment truck from a comfort or capability standpoint. But Toyota sells every single one of them they can build. They have no problem <laughs> moving the metal with the Tacoma. People love the truck. The nameplate is very well respected. and. So there's maybe not a lot of pressure to do a complete redesign of the pickup. So they're very slow and gradual in their updating of it. But I'm looking for a Tacoma somewhere. Tacoma, Tacoma. There we go. Here's one up on the, the stage here. As I said, different grills and updated tail lights and other exterior accents. 10-way power driver's seat, new infotainment system that supports Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and even Amazon Alexa. So pretty much all of those major platforms are covered. Very handy to have right there. They also showed off the RAV4 off-road, TRD off-road model, and I'm looking for that one. It might be right over here. <laughs> this way, thank you. I see the Sequoia they've also shown. We can talk about that on the way over. It's the whole family of TRD vehicles. Let's see. Yeah, here we go. This, they've made it snow in McCormick Place. Look at that. I'm, not, I'm glad I'm not the one that has to vacuum that mess up. That's a lot of fake snow. Anyway, this is the, the new Sequoia TRD Pro. It's seat seven, so basically you can take the whole family off-roading now. Um, obviously, it's benefiting from a number of changes, uh, some minor updates and enhancements. It's got a skid plate up front. They've tweaked the suspension. They've added Fox shock absorbers, very well-respected brand in the off-roading field. Um, has a wonderful 5.7 liter V8, good for 381 horsepower. And when you get the optional TRD off-road exhaust system, I'm sure it sounds absolutely amazing because that is a smooth running, powerful V8 engine that's really a joy to drive. What else is there to talk about? Oh, a selfie spot here. So many displays here at the Chicago Auto Show. Unfortunately, we don't ever really have the time to go and experience them or show them to all of you, but this is just give you a taste of what's going on here at a lot of these auto shows that we do cover. Finally, let's see if we can find that RAV4. I don't see it around here. Maybe it's over this way. If you follow me, we'll wrap up right quick. We've gone for about an hour or so. Give you a good look at what's going on here at the Chicago Auto Show. 
a lot of great products here. But this looks like this right here might be the RAV4 in question. It's the RAV4 TRD off-road. They've given it an updated suspension system with some red coil springs for a sporty look. Also, 18-inch wheels with special all-terrain tires. They apparently um, Toyota TRD spec'd out the rubber compound for those tires, so they want to get the, uh, the best traction that they can. Uh, additionally, torque vectoring all-wheel drive system and a uh, 2.5-liter four-cylinder engine, 203 horsepower. So that is a quick look at the TRD off-road, which... Let me see this placard here. I want to check something out. Is this... Oh, it's just a display. Yeah. Anyway, that is a quick look at the 2019 Chicago Auto Show. Thank you very much for watching. And of course, for more information on all of these vehicles and many others, make sure you visit autoguide.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just check out autoguide.com and click that bell so you're alerted whenever we upload a new video. Thanks again for watching, guys, and take care.